Web services are a huge resource of data and functionality we can call from the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Though these services are often commercial, for the developer there's also often a free tier of usage. In this video I'm going to use four services to build a weather forecast display using the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Hi I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join my community. I started this video thinking that I'd demonstrate one web service on the Pico W. Somehow expanded and I ended up using four web services in a linked pattern. So what was going to be adapting a simple example in an hour or so became six hours of work. The end result was worth it though, as these web services are really cool. Just about every web service out there on the internet runs over HTTPS and uses TLS to secure the transport. Security does make experimenting with web services a lot harder, but using the Wolf SSL's TLS library made this as easy as it can be, supporting both TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3 versions, which are common in web services right now. I'm going to talk about the web services I'm using and one approach to a software stack to do this on the Raspberry Pi Pico W in C++. There is detail on how that stack works and skills in debugging and exploring that I just can't go into in this video. This video is only 20 minutes. In our web service course on Udemy, we provide over six hours of video content plus a large number of examples. There's a link to the course in the description. If you'd like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not buy me a virtual coffee or lunch or a holiday? Use the super thanks button below. Please do hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. I do appreciate it. My target for this video is to be able to display the weather forecast data on an MSP2401 um, TFT display attached to my Raspberry Pi Pico W. This is the same display I'm using on that uh, name badge and that I've used previously um, in some videos. Web services obviously come from the world of the World Wide Web, but most of the technologies we don't need because they're about displaying images and text on the display. We're really interested in web services in the transport. But of course, web services have added a huge number of technologies, perhaps too many, describing web services, allowing discovery, etc. For this video, we're talking about RESTful web services generally and some nice, easy RESTful web services that are published online. And RESTful web services follow generally these five principles, which are, make them nice and easy for us to use on a microcontroller like the Raspberry Pi Pico W. This video is sponsored by Wolf SSL. Most web services are secured over HTTPS, so our code needs to implement a TLS, a transport layer security sockets. Wolf SSL has a library that makes this easy. This is available in both open source and commercial licenses with great support. The Wolf SSL library is really well documented with examples and tutorials of how to achieve TLS security. The library ports nicely to the Raspberry Pi Pico W and underpins the examples in this video. Wolf SSL have other great products too, including a crypto library, a secure boot process to validate firmware, SSH client, and TPM20, a trusted platform module library. Whether you're a hobbyist or build commercial embedded systems, Wolf SSL products are a fabulous accelerator. So please do go check out Wolf SSL. To build this example, we need quite a big software stack. At the bottom of which, of course, is the Pico SDK that everything is based on. Then I'm going to need FreeRTOS kernel. I absolutely have to have that because it's going to enable additional IP stack capabilities from LWIP. So talking of LWIP, we need CYW43 as a library, the extension to the Pico SDK to actually enable Wi-Fi, and then LWIP to give us an IP stack sitting on top of that. With FreeRTOS kernel, we've also got sockets included in that. I'm then going to secure those sockets with TLS using Wolf SSL. 
then I can have a HTTP protocol on top of that using FreeRTOS's core HTTP. Now some of the data I'm going to get back is going to be in JSON format and I'm going to parse that using TinyJSON and I'm going to wrap up all of this and how to use it in a nice sort of HTTP request model using uh, that library on the top there which is one of my own. In this video I'm going to show you what is possible but I can't teach you everything about web services and writing web services clients on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. This video is only 20 minutes long, whereas actually I've got a course on Udemy that teaches this that is six hours long. So there is a lot more content that we can go through. That course has 28 example projects, uh, shows how to use Python to explore and understand the web services before we actually build them, as well as doing some of the techniques around debugging web services so that you can build, explore and debug those web services that you're building. I've put in the link in the description. Go check out the course. Um, it gives you all of the grounding that you need to be able to build these web services. Some of the examples on the course look at IP geolocation, finding out where you are by your IP address and looking at weather maps. Um, and getting weather forecasts for your location. So I thought for this video I'd combine the two. But I decided to drop IP geolocations for this video because I realised that I could do something else quite smart. If I get the location from Google, I can also use Google service to actually draw a map of that location before we get into looking at the weather forecast. So this is three web services. Well, actually, it's a little bit more than that. So first of all, we're going to use Google's API to locate where we are and get a latitude and longitude for your location or roughly your location. I'm only interested in enough of the area in order to get a weather forecast. Then I'm actually going to produce a map and actually show that location and display that on that TFT screen. We can then go and get the weather forecast and display that before actually displaying a little icon. As a fourth added value service, we can get a little icon to actually summarize our weather and display that on the screen too, because we've got a car TFT screen. So all fun stuff. And all of this controlled and managed through a Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now these services are commercial, which means that they all have API keys that you need to actually register for and then include in the build. Now, it's really important that we don't sort of give those keys away, they belong to us. Some of them have charging information back with them. So the process I use is to place those keys into environmental variables uh, within my system, and then my build process and CMake picks those environmental variables up and inserts them into the code. So I'm going to rely on the open weather map key and that that's been defined as an environmental variable and a Google key that that's been defined as an environmental variable. Well, actually, there's a two more I'm going to rely on as well, because I want the Wi-Fi SID and the Wi-Fi password too. Obviously, my password isn't letting me in. All my code for this example is shared on GitHub. And we're going to go through this process. We're going to take our Pico online and then we're going to find the location. We'll then use that location to pull down a map and we'll display the map. We'll keep that map on the screen for a few seconds before we then look at what the local weather forecast is and display that. And using the icon code that comes back as part of that weather forecast, we'll then pull back an icon and add that into the screen. How are we going to find our location? Well, we're going to use the Google Maps API and use the geolocation function. This has to be issued as a post, and very unusually for a post, it actually has to have a query included, which has got to have the API key included in it. And then the payload I'm going to use for this is empty. You can put a payload that includes you know, Wi-Fi, um, base stations that you can see and cell towers that you can see in order to get a more accurate uh, location, but we don't need that. So what we will get back is a bunch of JSON which describes where our location is and it's that latitude and longitude that I'm interested in. I'm not too worried about the accuracy. The location service is called within the location class 
And all that this location class has is the ability to update, i.e. get its location, display its location, which basically display a map uh, on the TFT screen, and it's given the TFT screen on construction. And it can also return what the latitude and longitude that is up updated. So update is what is actually doing the web service call. So let's have a look at update then. So update is going to basically uh, go and use a request object, which is basically my HTTP request. It's got it, this uh, URL targeting, and I'm having to manually uh, shove in a query because I've got to do this as a post, and the library I wrote doesn't actually assume that you would end it, use a query on a post because it's quite unusual. So I've manually put in the Google key. Um, I am going to give it a, a payload to send over because it complains if you haven't got any payload at all. So we are going to put a payload in there. And basically, so I've got hitting that URL with our Google key and uh, doing request post. And out of that should come a location. So I should be able to actually see the payload here. And then I can actually parse it as a bit of JSON to get out the um, latitude and the longitude. The Pico standard IO does actually show me the JSON that actually was pulled back from that service. Though of course that data is actually just being purely used then to call the other web services. So the first thing is to get the map and we're using this static map from Google to, uh, to pull. It's a GET request and we need to provide it with a key. We need it uh, size so it's small enough to actually fit on our TFT screen. Uh, a zoom level, so this is how much detail is on the map. So 10 gives me a bit of the city um, and town structure around the area. And then finally center, which is what the center of that location is. So that's gonna be the latitude and longitude that we've previously pulled back. And this will give us a PNG image. So the display web service is a little bit different um, because it's actually going to do a little bit more output work. But again, it is actually just calling a web service. So again, we've got a request object and I'm again giving it a URL and that is the URL for this service that we're going to uh, target at this endpoint. I need a bit of a query, oh, well, I need a yes query string here. So I need my Google key. I need to know the size that we're targeting um, so that I get an image that is the right size for our TFT screen, the zoom level, and um, then I need the uh, center, the position that we're going to get. So that's my latitude and longitude. I can then issue this as a get, and what comes back should be our map. Now it's going to be massive. It's about 16K of data that we've got back. And then I'm very carefully using the SPNG library in order to um, decode that. Now to do that, I can't just decode the entire image in one go. Uh, if I tried to do that, we'd run out of memory on a Pico. We've only got 260K of RAM. Uh, we just don't have memory to do that sort of decoding like that. So I'm actually running this in a um, iterative uh, process going a line at a time and uh, writing a line out at a time. And that works and won't therefore use up all of the memory. And you can't really see that that's what I'm doing because the screen updates um, pretty instantly. So using this web service, I can pull down the map and then display it nicely on my TFD display. So let's get the weather. So we're gonna use the Open Weather APIs um, service. And this is a GET request. Again, we have to put a, an app ID or a key in there, and then the latitude and longitude. And this will give us a large uh, JSON packet with lots of information about the temperature, the current forecast, um, an icon, the code that we can use later, and we'll talk about that in a bit, uh, the location, there's a whole load of stuff in here. So I'm just gonna pull out a little of this JSON. Weather works in pretty much the same way. We have the ability to update it, which pulls back the new forecast, 
to display that forecast on the TFT screen. And again, it was given that TFT street screen on construction. And finally, to display an icon. So let's have a look at the update. So this is targeting that URL with a request. Um, we need to give it the API key so that we are actually allowed to run that service and the latitude and longitude as, as query parameters. I'm having to force this one to TLS 1.2 to make that work. Um, it just doesn't, it seems to be problematic if I allow 1.3, which is annoying because um, actually the icon we're going to pull back in a second is at TLS 1.3 level and won't back down to 1.2. So it makes it a little bit complicated for calling it, but we can do it. And we get back a massive JSON structure. And I'm just going to parse that JSON structure to pull out some of the details. So I'm going to pull out the temperature, um, minimum and maximum temperature in the forecast. And I'm going to pull out the weather icon and the weather conditions as well. So display for this is actually just putting some of that information on the screen using strings. So nice and easy. So we can just write the data that we've put back to the screen to give all the information around where you are and what the weather forecast is. So I'd like to add the icon to this because there is an icon code as part of this download and there is another service from the Open Weather Map API to be able to pull back that icon. Well, it's not entirely a service, it's really a CDN of a whole load of icons. They're nice and small and ideal for us to actually pull back. So all I need to do is hit this endpoint um, to give the name um, and .png extension of the icon I wanna pull back and use a get command and down comes an icon like these here. Finally, display icon is the final service and it really isn't a service, it's really just targeting a CDN and pulling down a PNG. So I'm going to construct the uh, URL of the targeted um, uh, PNG that we're trying to pull down and then we we'll issue that as a get. The, uh, what we should get back is a nice tiny little um, icon, in which case I can actually uh, decode that using the SPNG library in one go and then put it onto the screen and write it as a, an image. So there we go. So that should be the final part of our forecast, just adding in that icon. Now I can then replete this forecast process every 10 minutes. The forecast isn't going to change more often than that and the service allows me to call it that frequently. So the full demo, our Pico starts up, connects to Wi-Fi, goes and gets that location and uses that location to pull down a map of that location area. And then after about five seconds, it then actually puts up what the forecast is for that location and a nice icon describing that forecast. I hope this excites you as much as it does me on what might be the possibilities with web services. I'm British and of course I'm fascinated by the weather. There are other web services out there though, on areas like financial data or sports. If you build something cool on the Pico W using a web service, then let me know. I'd love to share it here. This took me around six hours, but I was building from some great examples and a position of knowledge. Some of that time just exploring and understanding the web services. Some of that time working with the SPNG library to get maps displaying correctly. The web service code was fairly simple to adapt, for example, on my course over on Udemy. To help you out, there's a voucher for a discount on that course available for a limited time only in the description. Check it out. If this video or any of my videos helped you out, why not buy me a virtual cup of coffee or lunch to say thank you? There's now that super thanks feature live on my channel. Just click the button. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do hit the like button. It gives me feedback. And please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.